Hi, it's Gus. Um, back again. Today I want to talk about uh, the ingredients to success. So if you're a parent, you've got children and you want to know how you can assist your children to reach their goals, uh, or to enjoy their football more, or to, to develop ambition, uh, this is what this uh, video blog will tap into. Uh, hopefully I can give you a little bit of information um, based on experience and um, experience that comes from getting to a, a fairly decent level, playing in the NSL and Malaysian League and, and um, representing my state and uh, just the experience that I've had over the last 30 years of football. Um, some ingredients there that I picked up and there's lots that I've learnt from um, my mentors and other coaches and trips and so forth. So uh, there's also the experience of, of being a father and of you know my wife and I having brought up two young adults now. Both are doing quite well. Um, so basically the you know we talk about the ingredients. What are that, what are the ingredients? I mean there is no f magic f wand or f formula that says that if you do A, B, C, you're going to get the success you need. Um, what it comes down to, basically, is uh, each and everybody, each and everyone's individual circumstances. Um, these circumstances could be numerous things. It could be, you know, your financial capacity. It could be. It could be the the makeup of your DNA in terms of your family history. It could be uh, the environment that you're in. It could be how many kids you have. Uh, it could be where you live. It could be a, a whole range of different things. But within those those concepts of differentiating means, uh, some vital ingredients, which basically. First and foremost, I think for me, it comes to number one is your parenting skills. And I mean, when you know, you think about it, when we first decide to have children, um, we're not expert parents. Nobody's an expert parent um, unless you've already had two or three kids and you will have experience of being a parent. But unless you've been through that, unless perhaps you're an older child with you know, your parents having had younger children, you might have some experience because you've had to help your your, your parents in bringing up your siblings. Um, so even then, it's not full-blown being a parent. So being a parent is one of those things, you go to the hospital, you know, the bundle of joy arrives and, um, you know, they hand this baby over to you and they say, all the best, good luck. And unless you, you know, do a little bit of research and, most people with common sense would do that. They would go and ask for help. They would go and ask their own parents about what to do, how to do things. You know, um, you're you're going to be winging it most of the time. So, in my opinion, it starts. You know, depending on what you want for your children, it, it all starts on the plan you have for them and where you want them to be, and and that starts before conception. So. You know, in order to be a parent, you know, during that nine-month period, if you decided that this is what you want to do, and you, your wife and I, your wife and yourself, or your your husband yourself has consented to say that this is it, we want to have children now, then it's your responsibility to go out and do some research and find out what being a parent means, the responsibilities that you you need to have, and and you know, go out and some, read some books about parenting, read, um, find out, go to YouTube, find out some cognitive. Um, document go and watch some cognitive documentaries that that sort of talk about the stages of child uh, development from the early stages right through to teens because um, these things will all help you it'll help in your decision making or helping your parenting skills it will help in into developing your a child that has ambition a child that is healthy a child that is healthy of mind healthy of body um, the more you know the better chance your child's going to have and the less you know, the less chance your child's going to have. So, you know, what you're going to learn is that with children, discipline and structure is key. It's key to everything. Um, you know, if you, for example, if you have a dog and you don't discipline your dog, your dog doesn't have boundaries, it doesn't know 
where its boundaries are, the dog gets stressed out and it'll eventually it'll end up biting people and it's the dog's fault. Well, it's not the dog's fault. The fault is that of the owner who hasn't placed the boundaries because when dogs live in packs, there are boundaries. There's a leader and there are boundaries they know they, they can't cross and that's what makes a dog, or puts a dog in a happy environment, an environment where the dog can feel loved and appreciated is to have that structure. And children are no different. Your children need to have structure, they need to have discipline, they need to have um, routine, and they need to learn the difference between right and wrong. They, they need to be taught, you know, and this, this day and age society, uh, parents are too busy trying to be children's friends, and I, I don't think that's right. I think maybe when the children turn to adults, that's okay, but that even then it doesn't, doesn't stop. You're still a parent even when they're adults. So... Um, if they do the wrong thing, you have to you have to tell them, hey, you've done the wrong thing. You know whether they're adults or not, because you know it's just the way it works. That's what being a parent is: is you're constantly trying to make your children better people and good people and self. Uh, what's the word for it? Self-actualized. So you want them to become self-actualized people because self-actualized people are unstoppable. No matter what happens, they keep going and they keep fighting and they'll keep persevering until they reach their goals and reach what they want. So with that, that self-actualization doesn't come from birth. It comes from development. It comes from the stages of development through the, the younger years to the older years. So for example, one thing I learned was that if you actually uh, begin speaking with your children for the age of eight months in two languages, they're going to be able to retain more languages. As they get older, they can actually learn more languages much easier than they would if you only teach them one language up until before the age of nine months. So by actually sitting there with them and speaking to them in two languages and reading books in two languages, they will actually be able to master language much, much more proficiently at an older age. But if you don't, they don't, because what happens is there's areas of the brain that are being wired um, to be able to do that. So what you're doing is you're setting up the brain for a specific task. And if you don't do it before a certain time, then it becomes much, much harder to rewire that part of the brain again. It's the same um, situation, let's say for example, if a baby, for example, was, um, if you put blindfold on a, on a baby for the first eight months of its life, um, or nine months I think it is, once you take the blind fire off, the baby will never see again because the brain hasn't been wired to use the eyes. So the eyes can never learn to see um, because we're not born with clear vision. When we're born, kids see uh, things are blur things are blurry. They don't see. They think they might see outlines and patterns, but they don't, from memory, they don't see a lot. They they gain their vision through um, through time, through through the brain being wired to teach the eyes how to see because we are, we're one of the only species that that is born premature and it takes a few years before a child can become self-sufficient whereas you know a horse or a cow is born and within a period of two weeks the the, the, the cows are self-sufficient they can actually leave them and, and they'll probably survive you know what I mean? um, or a deer or let's say a deer or, or, or some kind of wild animal and that's because they they um, they grow to full maturity before they um, before they're produced. Whereas uh, humans aren't. They um, they are born they're born prematurely. So you know we have every opportunity to instill things into our kids that are going to help them to to do well, to do better than everybody else. Because um, you know the way the world works, it's, it is a competition. It's, Million people striving all for similar, similar things, you know. And um, depending on the on the career that you that you want for your child, or the child eventually wants to do, then you know, regardless of the career, those careers are all competitive. Whether it's business, running a business, or whether it's playing football, they're very, very competitive. So it's important to make sure that um, you know when it comes to your children that you are the key ingredient in the process um, and so part of those you know as you being the number one ingredient the second ingredient the third ingredient the fourth ingredient and so forth has to be in terms of mental attitude towards how 
children are going to act and behave. So, for example, um, we're talking about things like instilling a hard work ethic. Um, we're talking about, you know, behaving the right way. We're talking about ensuring that they are mindful, ensuring that they do not get distracted too much. So, for example, if you've got a young baby, he's 12 months old, 6 months old, 8 months old, 9 months old, and, and they're growing, and every time a relative comes over, they pick up the baby, and it's like, do, 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 and they give it a lot of attention, a lot of attention, a lot of attention, and then by the time they get to you know, a year and a half, they, you, you give them a phone to keep them distracted, you get them watching TV to get them distracted, so that they don't bother you, so they give you more time. Well, unfortunately, in this day and age, it's so much of it now that what happens is the brain gets used to constant stimulation, constant stimulation. So you have to understand as a parent when your children are young that they need quiet time. They need reflection time. They need reading time. Nothing better than to sit down a child and get them to read a book for 30 minutes because it keeps them quiet. That's the way, one way to, to be able to keep them quiet is to actually get them to sit down and read a book quietly because it keeps them entertained but it's also instilling them with with knowledge and um, creativity and um, so yeah so just overstimulation at the early ages is not a good thing you know you've got to you've got to get some balance there you know um, again getting them to love something means starting them at an early age getting them putting them in an environment where they can enjoy whatever it is they want to do so in the case of football you know starting them early in football uh, for me is a good thing not a bad thing I think they need to have a balance as well. I think they need to learn other sports because it's important that they learn to control their bodies in all manners, in all manner of ways, okay? So, you know, like, again, we I compare today's generation to my generation and it's totally different, you know? We were out on the road all day, every day, climbing trees, swimming in the creeks, you know, riding bikes and, you know, there, was, there wasn't a lot of fear, you know? just parents used to let us go all day the main thing was get home before it got dark and um, and we used to do that on the weekends and on, on school holidays and it was a time to be out in, in, in friends house and out in the creek and playing games out on the oval or riding your bikes around and that that's how we were sort of brought up as opposed to today's generation where everything is is controlled um, it's all scheduled, so the activity, everything's activities, activities, activities. So you know, you leave school, they have a little bit of time to maybe settle down and have a bite to eat, and then straight away back in the car, you're driving off to ballet, you're driving off to soccer training, or you're driving off to music lessons. Or, so there's, it's, it's all hampered by activities, and then you get to the school holidays, and the school holidays, it's, you know, either camps and things like that you know it's very rare or they've got to stay at home and and they're not allowed outside because it's too the world is too dangerous this is why my wife and I chose to our home very carefully around the ages of uh, my when my children were growing up in their preteens so from the age of about nine ten eight, well, early actually seven and eight years of age right through to to 16 we chose a home in a battle, in not so much a battle axe, but in a dead, dead, dead end street. So there was no thoroughfare traffic. Um, we looked for places where there were other young kids. So we knew there were kids on the street. And that's where we lived. We lived in, in, a, in a place where we knew that, you know, cars couldn't drive in and out unless you knew who they were because they had no reason for being there. Um, and so there was relatively safe safety. So we, we, we knew that we can't shield them, we can't bubble wrap them. 99% of the time, but we also knew that we couldn't keep them in the house all day. So we we looked to, to move into an area where our kids could have that freedom to, to just walk out the front door, go next door to the friend's house, walk up the street to the other friend's house, go down to the bottom of the, the street where the tennis courts were and have some fun and, and do things out on the street, ride their bikes out on the street because it was a, a, a good street in terms of the safety issues there. That's why we chose that area, and so that helped my children to develop relationships and not to be inside all day doing nothing, you know, just playing games and uh, computer games and surfing the internet and so forth. So it was about um, in creating an environment for them where they can have that freedom. So, so yeah, I mean, yeah. So another key ingredient 
probably one of the most crucial ingredients to successful outcomes is, is to teach your children how to deal with disappointment because disappointment is going to be around every corner and you can you can factor in disappointment in many different ways so for example there's the disappointment of not getting picked for something there's the disappointing of losing a game there's the disappointment of somebody saying something to you there's the disappointment of losing the ball at the wrong time in the wrong place so there's many many more disappointments in football than there are successes although you have plenty of opportunity for successful actions and they quite often occur the, the ratio is probably going to be in reverse from an earlier age so the younger they are the more mistakes they're going to make the older they are the less mistakes they're going to make so it's a process of getting to the point where you you, you end up getting to a level where you're so good that your mistakes are, are far and few between but initially those mistakes are going to happen over and over and over again and you're going to have to teach children how to deal with that because a lot of them don't know how to deal with it uh, especially in, in my school there's a quite a number of children that don't know how to deal with with certain factors you know um, and it's a matter of trying to explain to them that that getting upset is perfectly normal because that's what you do if you don't get upset then you're not going to be competitive you have to get upset you need to channel that anger um, into a positive way however because what happens is sometimes when they get upset is they don't channel that anger what they do is that they allow that anger and, and that disappointment to get to them and then it affects them in a negative way so and, and that is by you know their body language dropping and they don't want to play anymore or they don't want to play the game at all they're going to quit because it's just too hard it's just not fair and you know it's they come up with a lot of different excuses as to why these things are happening to me other than 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 saying all right this is inevitable it's going to happen but the difference is how I react to it and that's what being responsible is basically is being response able being able to respond to whatever situation um, comes across your way and in every situation there are emotions involved and so we need to teach children that you need to experience those emotions but you need to channel them in a positive light and that's basically the most important aspect is knowing that these disappointments are going to happen to accept them to feel them to feel the pain to feel the anger but to get over it quickly and to let it pass through us in knowing that they are only just events in our lives that we can either use to disempower us or use them to empower us um, and so you have to learn early on that the actual disappointment and the actual failure or the actual negative consequence of anything you do is usually an opportunity for you to to pick yourself up and do better and to work harder um, and that's what it comes down to so you know I recently wrote a blog it was just a few days ago about my experiences when I was 12 when I got cut from my state team and I, I had a choice I could either quit I could feel sorry for myself but I didn't I got up the next morning with the help of my parents and, and what they said to me I got up the next morning and I started to work even harder than I was working because I realized that if I was going to make it the following year I'm going to have to do more um, so it spurred me into action and I used that that disappointment in a positive way rather than in a negative way and that's what it comes down to is, is knowing how to take that disappointment and turn it into a positive and that doesn't come easy for kids you have to teach them that you have to in some cases some kids are just natural so they'll you know ah, that's it I'm not gonna quit I'm gonna keep going because they're stubborn and so forth you know what I mean some of them have heightened egos and, and they won't accept failure they'll just keep going and going and going no matter what you know what I mean this is where you get people like Cristiano Ronaldo or Messi that no matter what happens they just up they go and they go and they go and they never stop and and that is something that needs to be taught you know so um, yeah so that's another ingre key ingredient is, is, is learning to deal with disappointment another is grit or hard work and children have to be made to understand that to be successful in anything certain sacrifices need to make be made and it comes down to two things time and effort if you're not willing to put in the time and the effort required to become good at something the chances are that you're not going to become good at something or you're going to get to a point where you're going to get good at something but you're going to plateau because you're not willing to do extra than what you've ever already done 
So at the moment I've got a boy who's going to back to Spain for his third year. So what it comes down to is that he needs to make some sacrifices. Um, you got to be prepared to make the sacrifices. So for example, you know, he might get Sundays off. Everybody else is out relaxing. I'll go into town in Valencia and walk around. Well, no, he's got to turn around and say, this is my day of rest. I'm going to relax. I'm going to rest my body because on Monday I'm going to get back into it. And I would even do some work on the Sunday. I'd work on something that's not going to um, exert some physicality out of me. It's probably just going to work on technique or I'm going to do some... Um, some research, some football research, watch some, some games, watch some documentaries, read a book about a, a, a footballer, a biography, I do something that's going to better myself. So on my day off, I'm working, everybody else is relaxing. And that's really what it comes back down to, is knowing how to work in a, in a smart way. So that's another key ingredient, is grit and perseverance. So yeah, I mean, that's that's a start. We could I could probably go on and on, I'm basically what I've just, tapped on today is, is more based on you know parenting and, and how important the role of the parent is in terms of your child's success you know because your children don't know you, you know you, when you when you take them to a club or when you take them to a school you you have to do some research you know so if you're taking them to um, a football club for trials you've got to do your homework you know you got to ask the club for a copy of their curriculum you got to ask them who the coaches are what are their qualifications where have they coached what have they achieved um, how long have they been doing this? What do they do for a day job? <laughs> That's a really important question because most of them are volunteer coaches, you know what I mean? This is why I think, that, you know, in terms for, for my establishment as a football school, it's a no-brainer because I do this full-time, you know what I mean? And anybody who does something full-time and have been doing it full-time for quite a long time is going to get better at what they do, especially if the person running school is open-minded and open to to advances in the game and advances in coaching methodology and and to question themselves constantly to improve the methodology and this is what we've tried to do with our school so when at least you know that when you're bringing them to an academy like ours that you know there's going to be some sort of structure there that's run via curriculum um, that curriculum has a specific model and that specific model has been running for a long time and we've had some proven successes with some of our kids, the majority of our kids, to be honest with you, they all improve, they all get better, and it's not just about the football, it's about the mentality. For me, football is a mental game. 99% is mental. And so you've got to look for a coach that's going to stimulate and help your child to gain self-confidence and self-belief and have the mental attributes that are necessary to succeed, not just in football, but in any manner of life. Yep, so that's about it. I uh, hope you enjoyed that and please leave some comments. Uh, feel free to ask me some questions. Thank you. Bye.